Genes are thousands of letters long. And with those thousand letter genes, there are often thousands of ways of breaking those genes. The problem we're trying to solve is how do we have one editing system or one therapeutic overcome not just one type of mutation, but several mutations in the same gene. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm building Amber, where we're building new editing systems for RNA therapeutics. All right, this is the lab space we're in here. I think we're part of a really key moment in biotech and biological engineering where we actually can start to build the kind of intuition that drives the innovation that people have been excited about for decades. Amber Bio was born out of the idea that large-scale edits are a requirement for scalably curing genetic diseases. And so we really got started in the lab January-ish 2022. And so we were thinking about how to build systems that can not just correct one or a few bases at a time, but really thousands of bases at a time. And we thought that the spliceosome was a fantastic place to start. The spliceosome is an RNA-guided RNA recombinant system that basically recombines RNA in healthy cells all the time. It's active in any cell, it's making RNA. Today, many of the therapeutics that we see are actually encouraging the spliceosome to make mistakes. And these mistakes lead to skipping events, which can, in some cases, restore function of the protein. So it turns out it's really challenging to leverage the spliceosome to actually edit RNA. What we've been able to do at Amber is actually leverage CRISPR-Cas systems to accomplish this. So we think about our CRISPR-Cas systems as homing devices where we can guide a repair template. This is a repair RNA to basically a site of splicing and then encourage a splicing event that actually changes the code of your target messenger RNA, thereby creating healthy protein and hopefully curing disease. If you think about the genome as a book, and that book has the code, the blueprints to make all the proteins and all the key molecules uh, in an organism, then a mutation is a change in a letter or a few letters on a page in that book. In many cases, mutations lead to disease. Therapeutics today focus on correcting one or a few letters in that book, or in some cases, removing some of those letters. There are different ways of breaking the code in that book. And if we focus on editing one letter at a time, then every new mutation is a new therapeutic, which means more R&D costs, more regulatory hurdles, and more manufacturing costs, increasing the price of therapeutics. What we're really trying to do is change pages at a time. We're really excited to translate some of these new editing systems that we've been building into human therapeutics. To do this, it of course requires sophisticated teams that can work in a highly interdisciplinary fashion. To solve certain problems, you need teams that can operate at sometimes scales that are not possible in academia. Those academic structures are great for proof of concept where you have an idea and you wanna get a little bit of data to show that that actually can work. However, to translate those proof of concepts into robust solutions that can be scaled and deployed in markets, we really require teams that are far greater than what's possible to support with traditional academic structures. And so for those kinds of problems, startups and industry in general is a better fit. The field really offers a huge trove of interesting puzzles and problems that when solved will create tremendous impact, not just for therapeutics, but for public health, for climate change. That is something that's really exciting to be part of. Ultimately, the goal of the company is to launch our own off-the-shelf products that can cure not just one pathogenic variant, but several at once to overcome genetic disease. Thank you for watching episode 16 of S3 and our second episode of our bio blackout in partnership with Pillar. This episode was really cool to me for a few reasons. First of all, Amber is a legit company. Even though they've only been in existence for a year or two, they've made a lot of headway in the space. They have a very practical approach and it's very engineering minded. I remember when filming with Jacob, there, there'd be points at which I'd forget we were talking about a biotech company and we're not just talking about a normal engineering company. And I even asked him about it, like why you talk about this like engineering, not biotechnology or biology. And he's like, well, 
to build products and to build things that are going to help people, you need to look at it that way from an engineering approach versus a biology and discovery approach. I think in general, the average person thinks of biology and they think of deep research, academia, really, really complex stuff, which is all true and valid. But in this kind of new world we're venturing into, there's so much opportunity to build real products based on engineering principles for the world. Another thing that's cool is I think this is a similar output idea as Octant, our previous episode, where it's about creating therapeutics to improve lives and to save lives, but it's a totally different approach. The end goal between Octant and Amber is similar. It's to create therapeutics that save and improve lives, but the ways that they get there are very different. I want to give a huge thank you to Pillar, who is sponsoring this bio blackout so that we can go and tell the stories of revolutionary biotech startups. When you think biotech, you do not tend to think small and scrappy and startup-y. You might think big, expensive, and things that take a long time. And that's true, and there's some merit to that, but S3 and Pillar is really excited about this idea of founder-led bio. It's not a new concept in general. We've sort of seen it with deep tech and hard tech, where instead of relying on traditional manufacturers and really big government programs to go build innovative stuff, startups and people with crazy ambition and ideas can go and do it too. But to biotech, that idea is new. And I'm really appreciative that Pillar believes in S3 and our ability to tell the stories of these exciting biotech startups during our month-long bio blackout. All right, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Keep on building the future. And I'll see you next week for episode 17, the third episode in our bio blackout.